Hello everyone, my goal today is to explain all these crazy settings in a very simple way so that you can be well informed when deciding what settings are going to be perfect for you. While some of these settings will be within a tolerance, there are some that I feel should not be changed. We're also probably going to ignore these settings right here because I don't really know anyone that uses them. I don't think they need much explanation, so we're just going to be skipping those. First, I quickly want to go over horizontal and vertical sensitivities. Before, I actually had my vertical sensitivity about half of whatever my horizontal was. And while that was fine, um, people kept talking about that if you want to keep a good muscle memory and consistency, you should keep them the same. And ever since I changed my vertical sensitivity to match my horizontal, uh, I definitely noticed a difference. In a game like Call of Duty where there isn't much vertical movement, I mean, there's characters jumping up and down and going prone, and these are like the old Call of Duties, mind you. Um, you didn't need a high vertical sensitivity, so that's what I was used to when coming to Overwatch. But when you have characters like Farah, Genji, huge HP characters like Winston and D.Va just flying all around the place, you want a good vertical sensitivity and that muscle memory consistency. So I recommend keeping those the same. Aim assist strength uh, is pretty much what you expect it would be. It's how strong is the slowdown on your reticle when you pass it over an enemy. I actually don't change this. I don't recommend anyone changing this. If you want to adjust your aim assist at all, your focus should be on window size. Now let me explain a uh, window size really quick. If you have an enemy, there is an area around them that once your reticle gets to this area, it will start to slow down. The problem is when there is another enemy character next to the first one, and this happens multiple characters are around, where their window size interferes with your target's window size and your reticle can get dragged in unwanted ways. So you can actually adjust this window size to be a lot smaller and closer to the character models that you're trying to aim at. However, making this too small can easily make it to where your reticle barely slows down at all and you go right past your target and it, you just don't feel it, the effects of it at all. On most characters, I really would not touch window size. The only one I really would say is Widowmaker. If you can adjust it to uh, somewhere between 70 and 80, that's a good window size because if you're trying to hit, you know, say, a Mercy who's hiding behind, who's hiding behind a big old tank, the tank's window size is going to drag your reticle away from that crucial Mercy headshot. So reducing the window size for Widow is, can be very, very helpful. But that's really the only hero in the game that I would recommend doing this with. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is aim smoothing. This confuses some people, so I'm going to explain it as best as I can. So if you move your joystick left and right really, really fast, you can imagine that this is the move, this is how it will be drawn on screen, right? Just back, forth, left and right, really jagged. Aim smoothing takes that movement and kind of exactly smooths it out so that the character on screen doesn't move as fast as your thumb is moving the joystick. This can make it feel a little bit sluggish and also you lose that twitchy feeling. This is why a lot of high rank players use aim smoothing at zero, but this is still pretty good if you say are just getting into the game and you're not comfortable with your aim yet. But I would say over time, you should slowly start to reduce your aim smoothing so you can get more better representation of your thumb movement by having it at zero. Now next is the aim ease in, but I'm actually going to skip this for now because we need to talk about aim technique first. As you can see here, I have linear ramp for myself, but I'm going to explain the other two, which we all should know, and that's dual zone and expo ramp. Some of you may remember an old video I did explaining the difference between exponential ramp and dual zone, where I showed this graph. This represents the area of movement on your joystick. So 90% of dual zone is low sensitivity. Pretty much all the same, it doesn't really vary that much. It also has a high acceleration, which I'll explain acceleration in a bit. And then once you cross over into that last 10% of your joystick movement, it shoots up in the high sensitivity, 
so that you could turn around really, really fast, but then you have really fine tune aiming. I actually used this for a long time and I really like it. You could still do flick shots with this aim technique as well, but I would say its largest weakness is close range tracking. This is good for McCree and Widow if they want to fine tune their shot at a long distance, but if you're running a Tracer, Genji, Reaper, Sombra, and you're really close up to your target and you're trying to strafe around them and do circles and dodge and you know they especially like with Genji jumping above their heads and you're trying to keep them at the center of your screen the entire time dual zone is going to be a problem for you because of the inconsistency of the sensitivities and how widely varied it becomes it's just really hard to get that fine tuning on a close range character exponential ramp and linear ramp are actually better for this and I'll explain why Here's a basic graph of exponential ramp. It's pretty self-explanatory, but as you start to leave the edge of the dead zone, your sensitivity and acceleration start to increase exponentially, which is why that's called that way, which is represented by this graph here that Blizzard had made when trying to explain the difference between linear ramp and exponential ramp. So you have this blue line here representing linear ramp. So let's take like 0.25 here, it's about 25% of the entire range of the joystick movement. If mapped to linear ramp, it's raw input, so the output value is also 25. Now, it was a time where people were a little bit confused and felt that exponential ramp made uh, was actually faster than linear ramp, which is entirely not true. That's only when you're dealing with input values that are higher than one. And as you can see, the entire joystick input is between zero and one so it never goes above one so exponential ramp could never be faster than linear ramp exponential ramp is simply taking that raw input and making it a little bit more manageable by curving it the factor that's used for ex exponential ramp is 2.5 so it'll take that 25 percent or 0.25 input and convert it into 0 0.03125 very very low number compared to 0.25 right so that's why you can see this curve way at the bottom here let's just clear the screen real quick so right at the 25 point uh, you can see the output value is like really really low it's not even reaching 0.25 not even close so that's why it feels really smooth and fine-tuned in the middle movements or when the movements are just starting and then it'll slowly start to speed up as you're trying to, you know, make that turnaround. And before I go further, I want to explain acceleration really quickly. Imagine a car that has to reach 60 miles an hour. Oh, it's a terrible arrow. It has to reach 60 miles an hour. We're going to take a second car and do the same thing. It also has to reach. 60 miles an hour. However, the acceleration of car number one is say 45. This is an arbitrary number, it doesn't really matter. And the second car has an acceleration of 20. Obviously, car number one is going to reach 60 miles an hour faster than car number two. You see 60 actually means percent. This is the percentage that your joystick is deflected. So if you deflect your joystick at 60%, that's your input value of 60%. Now the game has to catch up to your input with a certain acceleration. So it's gonna reach six, that 60% deflection in a certain amount of time. This all happens in like nanoseconds, right? But it can create a, a high acceleration, can create a feeling of inconsistency in your aim, like just too many variables in it. It's just too fast. It makes things too fast for seems like no reason. So that's the difference between acceleration and sensitivity. I hope uh, I explained that well. So now let's come back here. Now we're going to talk about aim ease in. Aim ease in is the option Blizzard added so that you can take this raw input of linear ramp and turn it into your own customizable curve. They put the range of this between one and a hundred, which represents the factors of between one and five. So if you were to take Expo Ramp's factor of 2.5 and then switch to Linear Ramp 
and put aim ease in at 50. These two are exactly the same. There is no difference. If you use the default exponential ramp and then switch to linear ramp with 50 aim ease in, it is exactly the same. Now I can't really say that the acceleration is the same because remember that could be a little different, but I'm pretty confident that both the expo ramp and the linear ramp acceleration are the same. So aim ease in gives you that customized exponential ramp curve. So if you feel expo ramp is a little bit on the slow side, it's not responding as fast as you like, just reduce it to say 30 aim ease in. Now, if you remember my settings from before, I actually have 70 aim ease in. If you convert that, it actually is a factor of 3.5 which is actually higher than the highest factor <laughs> that Blizzard had listed on this graph. So my curve is, I'm gonna do this really crappily, is just kind of like way out here. That's my curve. I did start at th around 30 Amy's in, which is around the 1.5 factor. I believe it's the 1.5 factor. Again, I'm terrible at math. And that's why I use linear ramp over expo ramp because it's the same thing you just get more control um it's not really reflected that well like it's not explained too well to those that don't get it and i and that's why i'm making this video uh, in the hopes that you guys can understand and maybe those who use expo ramp will switch over to linear ramp and then play with the amy's in to find out maybe you do want something a little bit more faster and twitchy feeling or you want to feel a little more control just by increasing or decreasing the Amy's in. Oh, and before I forget, if you wanted to see what dual zone would look like on this graph, it would be something like this. You could see here that 90% of the sensitivity is just not even going up that high. It's super low sensitivity, and then it just shoots right up, right up to the max uh, input value of one. And the problem is here, and that's because it's such a sudden increase in speed and sensitivity that it can throw you off, especially if you're trying to track someone. So I hope I explained well enough what all these crazy values and aim techniques and whatnot, what they really mean and how they really work. And you can find your own personal settings with confidence. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. My name is Chit, and I approve this message.